Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about how God only wills good things, not just everything that happens. And this time, can the church be corrupted? A large portion of this question can be answered by simply defining church. If we define it as Webster does, as merely a body of religious believers, of course corruption can seep in. Even an entire body of religious believers, say, the prophets of Baal, can be corrupt and wicked without exception. However, here we're talking about one specific church. And I say to thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16.18, spoken by Jesus. We're talking specifically about a church built by Jesus on Peter. Peter's eventual role as the Bishop of Rome would be passed on, and today we call the Bishop of Rome the Pope. So the specific church being referred to here is the Catholic Church. Again, as with other religious gatherings, however, a certain amount of corruption is possible. Individual people, and even large groups, can start to believe false things and turn away from the faith. This has happened numerous times throughout history, such as in the case of the various heresies that have taken place, like Arianism and Nestorianism, and the times when groups have broken away from the church, like Anglicanism and Calvinism. Can individual parishes start teaching false doctrine? Again, the answer is yes. Again, Arianism. Priests and even bishops can fall victim to this. Nestorius himself was a bishop. What about popes? Again, yes. Pope John XXII was guilty of teaching that souls don't see God, the beatific vision, when they die, but only after the general resurrection at the end of the world. The very next pope made it a doctrine that they do. Clearly, popes are still human, and therefore are still capable of making errors. So, what did Jesus mean when he said the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against his church? The promise of Jesus to the faithful is that the church which is founded on Peter will always contain the truth and be able to lead people away from the gates of hell because of that truth. It means that no matter what, the true doctrines of the church will survive, and people will still be able to reach heaven through the sacraments, because of this, so long as the Pope doesn't try to make a heresy into a doctrine binding on all Catholics to believe, the doctrines of the Church are still untarnished, and the gates of hell have still not prevailed. The Church itself is intact. However, there's also something else to take into consideration. Most of the Church is unharmed by evildoers in any case. This is because what we call the Catholic Church, also known as the Church Militant, is only one of three parts of the whole Church. There are two other parts, the church suffering, those who endure purgatory to reach heaven, and the church triumphant, the saints and angels in heaven who vastly outnumber those on earth. So a certain amount of corruption can definitely take place in the church here on earth, even a lot. But when viewed in its proper context, the church is still fulfilling its larger function, and still has a larger complement than is usually supposed, most of whom are holy and faithful. Next. Who made us subject to futility? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.